Hi, welcome back to YTV. We left you in April with our interview with outgoing Yale President Richard Levin. And today, for our first interview of the semester, we're very excited to be joined by Yale's new president, Peter Salovey. President Salovey has been at Yale for more than three decades and took office as Yale's 23rd president on July 1st after serving for four years as the university's provost. President Salovey, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Cody. So, has it fully sunk in yet? Did, did President Levin glue your phone or, or pull any pranks on you <laughs> when you moved into his office? Well, it, it is starting to sink in. You know, we had a very long overlap period, uh, by, even by academic standards. And uh, I would say that was a gift to both of us because it really allowed President Levin to uh, hand off certain uh, uh, meetings and events uh, and relationships that were sort of future oriented. Uh, but it also allowed me uh, to kind of shadow him and learn uh, a, an awful lot about parts of the university that were new to me uh, and presidential activities that were new to me uh, over a you know, long period of time, really, what, six, seven months. And uh, you know, friends in the business world, they'd never seen a transition like this uh, in leadership, but, but for uh, President Lemon and myself, I, I, we viewed it as a, a wonderful opportunity. It was like, I think the, the metaphor that uh, President Levin liked to use was running a relay race where the baton pass was happening, but the camera was in slow motion, so you got to see every second of the baton being passed between the runners. And uh, uh, it's worked out pretty well. On July 1st, uh, I started up, and uh, we, t we, we made that day a little low-key. Had a nice coffee event for the um, staff, and uh, uh, kind of moved in and met with everybody. Uh, the surprise of that day, though, was that uh, Mike Morand came over with a certificate uh, indicating that I had just been named a Kentucky Colonel. And so I, I would say the first recognition of being president was from the state of Kentucky, and uh, I think I as actually, one would expect. Yeah, for for somebody who likes bluegrass <laughs> music, I think uh, uh, I was honored, and pleased, and uh, charmed. Uh, by well, we moment. we've got a question for you about your band later on, so I want you to uh, keep that thought. We'll come back to it during the speed round. Uh, okay. But I, I wanted to start off. With, you know, there's certainly been no shortage of issues for you to confront since since coming into office, and front and center has been Yale's policy towards sexual misconduct. Now, this has become a national story, um, and it sparked outrage uh, from students, parents, and alumni, many of whom have signed petitions calling for policy changes. Were you surprised by the backlash? I mean, did, did, did this shock you when, when you heard about it, and, and was it warranted? Well, let me, let me uh, start um, from a couple of years ago, really. So, uh, uh, first of all, I'm very committed to a campus that uh, doesn't have a place at all for rape, for sexual violence, for sexual misconduct. And um, I know that we want to evolve processes, processes and procedures, uh, as well as prevention programs and education uh, that reduce uh, a any of these horrible uh, incidents. It's, it's not the kind of campus culture uh, that we want here. Um, now, there have been some, I think, uh, very good innovations over the last few years. And they were driven by student interest and student input. Uh, when I was dean of Yale College, uh, a group of students um, who uh, pa are passionate about this issue, some of them survivors, um, came in to talk to me about the need for a single office that worked with students who wanted to make a complaint, wanted to know what their options were. And that was uh, the impetus for developing SHARE. Okay. Uh, during the time I was provost, a group of students came to me again, people uh, who felt uh, strongly about this issue, some of them survivors, uh, organized by the Women's Center, to talk about the um, difficulty uh, of having different uh, uh, processes and procedures in different parts of Yale and the need for a university-wide approach. 
out of that came um, uh, continued work by those students that led to uh, work by the Women's Faculty uh, Forum uh, that then led to a report and then committees chaired by Michael Del Roca coming out of all of that is the current university-wide uh, committee. I think everyone interested in this issue thinks Cher and the university-wide committee are an improvement uh, on uh, uh, prior uh, practice. I think um, the fact that we release a report every six months uh, is a level of transparency that uh, 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 despite the need for incredible confidentiality, uh, that probably is unmatched on any other campus. Having said that, I think we're now having a discussion about um, displeasure with penalties in some of those cases. And of course, those ca I can't talk about any of those cases. And in fact, in many of those cases, I don't know anything about them because, they, because they're, they're confidential. I think what we need to do is um, uh, develop, uh, and, and I talked about this in my message to the community, develop a set of scenarios that make it clear that the full range of penalties is possible, including expulsion, uh, that um, uh, that is the starting point uh, under consideration uh, when uh, uh, a case that um, uh, you know uh, of rape is uh, is uh, brought forward. Um, so, uh, you, you know, am I surprised that uh, that there are um, uh, that there's a lot of concern in, uh, about this issue on campus? Well, no. It's an incredibly important issue. People have very strong feelings about it. Do I think? that the confidential, confidentiality required as part of our twice a year report makes that report difficult to understand, uh, allows, uh, you, you, know, you know, makes it hard to have a dialogue about the meaning of that report? Yes, and that's part of the, that's part of the issue. But there, there is certainly, you, you talk about this being an issue around punishments. I mean, th these issues are hitting a lot of top colleges, not just just Yale. Uh, Duke recently uh, revamped its policies and, and stiffened its penalties. What is, is there a collaboration or conversation among university presidents about this issue? I know Duke's president, Richard Broadhead, was, you know, your predecessor as dean of Yale yeah, College. Yeah. Have you spoken with him or the president of Amherst or others about this issue? Yeah, so I, I go to meetings, uh, and, and really I'm referring to the period when I was provost, but, but when I was a dean of Yale College, I went to meetings with other deans. When I was provost, I meant to went to meetings of other provosts, Ivy League Plus, uh, AAU, and uh, now I will go to meetings of presidents. And I will say this is a topic that is discussed at those kinds of meetings. Uh, and uh, I, I would say uh, we are, uh, we, we try to learn from what works best on other campuses. The whole idea of uh, writing up scenarios uh, uh, in part came from looking at how Duke handled, uh, it developed its website. We learned from it. So we're very open to it and, and uh, very open to uh, uh, sharing what we learned too. Are there certain policies there that you think Yale should move towards? I, I mean, Duke you know, has, has mandatory reporting and, and you've got other colleges like Vassar um, you know, that really uh, uh, put expulsion front and center. Um, it, is, is that something that Yale should move towards? Should, you know, when the next report comes out, do you want to see stiffer penalties? Um, you know, I can't really answer that question because I have to know what the cases are and what the, what the actual behavior is. I, 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 what, I, what I'd rather do is um, develop a set of scenarios that we can put on the web that, web that make it clear the kinds of penalties that Yale considers and that, and that make it clear that expulsion uh, uh, is a starting point, uh, uh, is a first consideration, uh, is, a, is certainly a presumption in a, in a case involving rape. But I, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to.
talk about the penalties in the cases that were reported in the that were listed in the report because I just don't know anything about what those what behaviors were involved in those actual cases. I I, I didn't hear them. Sure. Well, let's uh, move on to uh, presidential selection. Uh, you know, you you took office on July first, but from the moment you were appointed provost, uh, you know, people speculate that you may very well be Yale's next president. So, w was there any surprise for you with this announcement? I mean, were, were you given any indication when you were appointed provost that you were being groomed for this job? Uh, no. Uh, uh, I was, uh, when I was appointed provost, uh, I made the assumption, and there was really no reason not to, that President Levin was going to continue as president for a good long time. Uh, he's a young man. Uh, although he had served as Yale's president for uh, longer than the typical president, uh, we... Uh, uh, he was getting a lot done and seeming to enjoy the job, and I think that's true right up till the day he announced his resignation uh, or his intentions to uh, to, to step down. Um, so I would say no. I don't think I was being. I, I certainly wasn't clued in about anything. Uh, I don't think I was being groomed for the job in in in, in any explicit way. I will say that all. Uh, Often, uh, when there's a presidential transition, the provost is someone who is looked at as a possible internal candidate. So um, I, I can't deny that I had that thought, that, oh, if there were ever a, a transition, I might be um, uh, uh, asked uh, um, uh, to be a candidate. But no. And, uh, uh, you, you know, the... Um, Right up until the time the uh, senior fellow of the Oak Corporation called me and asked me whether I would serve as president if they were to offer me the job, I really had no idea what was going to happen. Yes, I was being interviewed. I knew that I was on somebody's list, or, but I had no idea how many people were on that list and how long the interviewing process was going to last. Or, or anything. Well, now, now you've got the job, and, and I, I want to go uh, back to, to President Levin. Uh, President Levin was often criticized for, for a lack of visibility on campus uh, and maybe a lack of student engagement. Uh, now, you've been very active at Yale sporting events over the past couple months, uh, and I notice even your email signatures are an informal uh, Peter uh, rather than, you know, President Levin's more formal Richard C. Levin, you know, Yale University president. Are you taking these and possibly more steps to change that perception? Um, I, I really, I, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm actively trying to change a perception from the past. I think President Levin was a very effective president. I will say that I'm, um, I, I have my own style and, and, and my own approach. Uh, I, I've always enjoyed you know, uh, 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 teaching. Uh, I've always enjoyed running a lab. Uh, I very much enjoyed being dean and provost, and uh, part of the most enjoyable aspects of those positions is the interaction with uh, other parts of the campus community, students, staff, faculty. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I don't enjoy it when I'm feeling out of touch. Uh, I like to feel like I have my pulse, my finger on the pulse uh, of the campus. I will say I also think communication is very important, and uh, you know I, I do write those every other Monday messages and uh, uh, enjoy writing them. But I see it as a way of they're deliberately informal, they're deliberately conversational. It's sort of like let us in. I'd like to let the campus in on something interesting that happened that week. Well, I, I want to switch to uh, athletic recruitment because this is another topic that President Levin received some criticism um, from students and alumni. Uh, President Levin decided to, to lower the number of athletes recruited, even lower than Ivy League allows. Uh, many have said that this puts Yale at a disadvantage uh, to many schools in the Ivy League, like Princeton and Harvard. Will you lift President Levin's recruitment caps? So on this topic, of, of athletics, I, I am still in, uh, in, in, in listening mode and in fact-gathering mode. Uh, I can say this, uh, from having had many conversations with student athletes, with alumni who were athletes when they were here at Yale, uh, with coaches, with uh, Mr. Beckett, 
the athletic director. Uh, uh, and, and those kind of conversations will continue. But I will say after having those uh, conversations uh, the following, you know, I, I think we want to run an excellent program. And I think that means that the program um, should uh, be one in which students uh, enjoy their participation, that it fits well with a model of a scholar-athlete, that it helps develop leadership, right? That, that, that the program is a quality program. Uh, I think uh, uh, um, uh, being competitive uh, on the field or ice or what have you uh, is, is, a, is important. Um, I'm very proud that we, are, that we have the national champion uh, uh, ice hockey, men's ice hockey team. I'm very proud of, of uh, uh, the incredible accomplishments of many teams last year, from you know women's tennis to men's lacrosse to volleyball to hockey. Uh, but I'm also proud of the improvement that our football team showed over the course of the season. Now, um, I am very committed to trying to reduce the distance on campus, the social distance on campus between athletes and non-athletes. I think that means uh, encouraging uh, athletes to live on campus. I think it means encouraging non-athletes to support our, ath our ath athletes. I think that will happen if, there's, uh, if students are living together and forming friendships. Um, I think uh, we uh, want to see uh, athletes view themselves as campus leaders, as uh, students who are no, lo no, no more likely to uh, um, you know, get into trouble of any kind than anybody else. Uh, in fact, quite the opposite, are as likely to be leaders on this campus as anybody else. Um, I think we develop those norms, reduce the uh, segregation between uh, athletes and non-athletes, reduce any stigma that athletes feel, and they, they feel them, they tell me that, they feel that. Uh, and, um, uh, 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 you know, try to run the most excellent program we can, uh, and, uh, and the numbers will take care of themselves. I, you know, I, I, you know over, over time, uh, uh, we'll figure that all out, but, but we, have, we have challenges to work on first. Um, let me just say that when I talk to uh, the athletic director, when I talk to coaches, when I talk to alumni, when I talk to students, they, have, they share this view. And, you know, I, I don't think this is controversial. I was delighted when Coach Reno said that he wanted football players to live on campus for at least three years in order to get the most out of Yale. I think that's exactly the right approach. Now, uh, just very briefly, uh, uh, last question before we go to the speed round of you know ten fun questions. Uh, in your speech to the class of 2017 last Saturday, you called the discussion of socioeconomic status one of the last taboos uh, that remains at Yale. Now, Yale decreased its financial aid budget this past year, tuition increased by four percent, and the student contribution rose. How do you go about changing this taboo in light of these changes? Uh, we will always have an aggressive financial aid program. Uh, it is still the case that we have need-blind admissions for domestic and international students. It is still the case that we are uh, uh, providing financial aid for more than half uh, the freshman class. It is the case that the average awarded amount uh, this year in the freshman class is about $40,000. Uh, it is you know, we, I don't know how else to say it, we will always have an aggressive financial aid program. I think students will be hard pressed to find other colleges or universities uh, providing uh, the level of financial support that, that we do. We will also always be flexible and when students find themselves with uh, a, a new uh, financial issues that they didn't anticipate or something happens in their families, we will uh, make adjustments. So. Uh, I'm very committed to, to continuing to be aggressive here. I'm delighted that a student from a family at the national median income of income, the national income median, comes to Yale with no family, uh, no expected family contribution. Uh, that, that number, that uh, family uh, income of $65,000 or less. 
Um, I think we I think we have to stay on top of that issue. I think uh, um, uh, the recession has left many families, particularly in the middle of the distribution, um, um, and, you know, worse off than they were before the recession, and we're going to have to be sensitive to that. Now I want to end with, with some fun questions. Uh, we did this when we sat down with President Levin. We did a speed round of 10 questions. So these are very short, sometimes, you know, uh, yes or no or, or choice uh, kind of questions. Um, so very short questions, very short answers. First one right off the bat, favorite restaurant in New Haven? Oh, I have a lot of favorite restaurants in New Haven. Uh, I love uh, Union League. I love Ibiza. Uh, we eat at Pacifico a lot. Um, at a whole other level, I am a huge fan of Louis Lunch. Uh, um, you know, we eat a lot of places, and I, 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 I like I like them. We are very lucky in New Haven to have uh, such a great restaurant scene. Best type of facial hair, and, and is, uh, it, is, it, is I, it coming back in the so near I'm future? So I'm still partial to my mustache, and uh, you never know. It could come back at a moment's notice. Future Yale honor, Salve Hall or a campus statue? Uh, well, uh, I think I will let others decide that um, uh, I, am, I am going to just try to do the best job I can, and uh, if at some point later in my life somebody wants to honor me with... With a, you know, uh, uh, Would you want the statue to have a mustache or no? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, at that point, if there ever were a statue, we would have to figure out whether the number of years on this campus with a mustache exceeded the number of years without it, and maybe that would determine uh, uh, whether the, the statue were mustached or not. Dinner with any Yale uh, alumnus or alumna, who would it be? Wow. Well, I've Alive never, or dead. Well, <laughs> uh, that is, that is a very, really uh, uh, wonderful and interesting question. I've never had dinner with Merle Streep. I think that would be fun. Uh, I've, uh, if we go back in Yale's history, I would love to have dinner with uh, 19th century and 18th century presidents of Yale to really understand what their lives were like and how the job has changed over uh, the last uh, 312 uh, years. Do you think uh, your band, Professors of, of Bluegrass, will make an appearance at Spring Fling? Uh, well, if we have, we have played at Spring Fling before. That would not be a first. And uh, if we were invited, it could happen. Uh, I will say that the Professors of Bluegrass, while, uh, you, you know, while we are, don't perform in public very much, only a couple times a year, uh, this is the year we have a new CD. In fact, I shouldn't call it a new CD. We have our only CD we've ever made in our 20-year history. So I'm looking forward to making that available. It's called Pick or Perish. I, I found it on iTunes. Oh, I listened to it last night. It was good. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. That's great. It's obviously a takeoff on Publish or Perish. <laughs> Students living in new residential colleges over or under five years? Over, oh, that's a very good question. I don't know the answer to it yet. I will say we are aggressively fundraising, and, uh, uh, and uh, we are the beneficiaries of great generosity toward the new colleges, but we have not yet raised all the money for the new colleges, and that is the threshold uh, for building them. Yes, we still have some details to work out. Yes, we still need to appoint a committee that will think about the impact of adding students. All of that will happen, but in a way, the bottom line is when we've got all the money raised and we're not there yet. When I asked President Levin, have you ever had a Wenzel? Uh, you know, uh, I have not yet had a Wenzel. Uh, I do know what a Wenzel is, and okay. I have seen a Wenzel. I've even spoken with a student while he was eating a Wenzel, Whoa. Uh, but didn't give me a taste. But uh, I'm going to have to go over there. Okay. Uh, you know, you got to uh, fix that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know there might be a little heartburn involved, but, I, uh, but I'm, I'm ready to try. It's worth it. I'm ready to try it. Yes, I understand that. I have had a Shack burger. It was delicious. <laughs> toads or box? <laughs> well, I guess I would have to say toads because the professors of bluegrass have Absolutely. played toads. Right. Last one. If one of the new residential colleges was named Clinton College, who would it be named after, Bill or Hillary? Oh, that's a great one. 
You know, both great American statesmen, both have made wonderful contributions to this, uh, I, uh, to, to, to our country and to the world. And so I think, I think you'd have to name it uh, 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 Hillary and William uh, Clinton College. <laughs> President Salovey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate it. And good luck, good luck with your first year, and thank you for joining us. We've got an exciting semester planned for you, so make sure to tune in for more interviews with Yale's most, most interesting students, faculty, community members, and campus guests. As always, for YTV, I'm Cody Pomerantz, and this has been another segment of Everybody Has a Story. Back to you in the studio.